I was not expecting to get this run so quickly. I started running this again about a week or two ago um, because I realized that my any percent world record that I commentated uh, had my old voice. And I didn't like intentionally change my voice, but I sound better now. <laughs> and I like my voice more now. Um, and I want to do an updated commentated speed run. Um, also because I didn't like that run because of a couple of mistakes I made. I did make similar mistakes in this one. However, obviously I beat the record by about 20 seconds in game time. Um, I don't know how much real time. I didn't check. It doesn't really matter. Um, the leaderboards are IGT now, just for loading time differences because it's on PC. Anyway, <laughs> um, I just wanted to do a updated commentated speedrun, but I wanted to get a new world record first. Um, so just like this, this run is basically exactly the same. I just wanted to update it. Um, so we do this jump three times in a row, just like last time, because we need to get the batteries uh, for a later or I mean, for the rest of the run. Um, and while we don't get all of them here, we get enough here to get to the spot that we'll get the rest from because it is actually faster to get them from somewhere else. Um, I'm not sure where the cutoff for that is because bristle percent is another category, you know, in this game and you need significantly fewer batteries, but I'm not sure if it's faster to do this jump specifically. Um, I think it's five times. Well, yeah, actually, if it's only five, because I did six because I thought I had to do it more. Anyway, <laughs> I just did a bristle percent run, um, so that's not on my mind. But I'm not really sure where the cutoff for grinding here versus grinding later is. Um, yeah, we do this jump a bunch so we can get uh, 600 batteries, or at least almost 600 batteries, and then we get the rest later. Um, I do want to do more with this game because I really, really like this game. This is one of my favorite games ever. I love it. Um, I've spent, if I had to guess, probably around 300 hours in this game because I have just over 100 hours on Switch. And then on Steam, I have about 120 hours. But I also did a lot of playtesting before the PC version was released when I was helping port over code, um, animating things and getting the controls working on PC and everything. I... I'm not sure why I didn't grab that 25. I guess it is faster not to, and it's not strictly required. Um, I did this day before yesterday, I think. It was either it was a day or two ago is the point. So I don't remember everything that exactly happens in the run. <laughs> anyway, we have about as many batteries as we'll need in order to get to the spot where we can grind the rest of the batteries in the game. Because otherwise we would have to do the tutorial jump 10 times. And while it does take a while to get to the grinding spot, um, it doesn't take quite as long as it would take to do that jump seven more times. Or six, five more times? I don't remember. It, it's a lot. <laughs> it's the point. And this other way is technically faster. So we used to do the thing where there's a pillar on the right where you can bounce up onto it. We do it later on the run anyway. Um, but you used to have to go up there to get the artifacts that I'm about to collect. But I realized that it was actually faster to do this, where you just collect this, back up, and then ride along this wall. Um, so the reason that the normal car is able to ride along this wall so easily is because of the updated PC physics. Essentially, on Switch, you could ride on a wall super easily because of the Unity physics. The Unity physics broke when it was ported to a new version of Unity, so it can be put on PC. Um, so they had to manually add a force into the wall, however they tied it to frame rate on accident, or rather they didn't untie it from, from frame rate, so the physics process is tied to the frame rate, which means the higher your frame rate is, the stronger the force into the wall, and I'm playing at 144 FPS, which means the force into the wall is extremely strong. There is a category on speedrun.com uh, for 60 FPS where you can't do most of the crazy wall riding tricks. Um, you can still ride on the wall and you can still do a lot of skips and it's still a really good category. I don't personally run it because it's not my personal cup of tea, but it's very similar to the Switch version, um, especially with stuff like waddle skip, uh, but with the load times being so much less and being IGT instead of on Switch, it was RTA because, you know, it was all on Switch. So the load times were all the same. Um, so like the, the way that we grind batteries in this is a lot more reliant on it being IGT. Um, like, technically, it is faster RTA on PC specifically, unless you have abysmal load times. <laughs> but, you know, um, it is IGT just for that level playing field. Um, and just to give people the chance to, um, like, 
potentially pause if they need it in the middle of a run or whatever. Like, obviously, I'd encourage not doing that. It makes it harder to verify the run. Um, but, you know, if something comes up in emergency. <laughs> it isn't a super long run, but I imagine that wouldn't be too much of an issue. But um, I like to, you know, have that accessibility option there. That That is one thing that, as much as it sucks being basically the only person... Oh, so that jump that we did to get that piece, that opens up the main pathway here. Um, I kind of forgot about that. It's a super easy jump, but I just don't really think about it anymore. It looks a lot harder than it actually is. You just hold break while you're in the air. Um, and then this here, we are going to jump this wall to get to block sheep early. Um, which uh, we need a piece in here to unlock a portal for later, which I will point out. <laughs> um, that is one thing that I, I don't necessarily like being the primary, and as of right now, the only runner for CarQuest Deluxe. Um, however, it does allow me to set up um, what I feel is the most fair rules without having to worry about people who value competition over fun or whatever in a speedrunning category. Like, it's a video game. <laughs> it's for fun. Um, and I know there are a lot of people who find or who think that speedrunning is a lot more about the competition, but like, that's just not the vibe of this game. <laughs> Um, and it's not the vibe that I like to carry into speedrunning personally. Um, I have tried, I've looked everywhere around here for a way to get into that portal early without pressing all the switches, because that would save a bunch of time, because we actually have to do that twice, because this is where we grind for the batteries. Um, but as far as I know, there is not a way to, like, clip into the wall or anything. I've tried a lot of things, and nothing has worked. Um, so we get that piece to open up that ramp to the right, which will be useful in a little bit. Um, and then we get this piece, which opens up the windmill behind us. So we go in there, and that was a skip. Normally, you'd have to push all the block sheep into the corral there, um, and then you'd have to ride over the top of them to get that piece to open the windmill. Uh, and that's why we the ramp piece is actually available, because that would lead you up on top of the block sheep. But luckily, we can skip pushing them. It takes forever. <laughs> it is so annoying to have to push all the block sheep. Um, so it's it's a very, very nice set. It is skippable. The, there's like kind of an invisible wall there. It's a little janky, but... Um, it's not a super difficult skip or anything. That's the piece that opens up the... It opens up the switches that open up a portal. You'll see, it's not complicated. It's hard to explain it, though, because it's it, un, it uncovers switches that actually allow us to open a portal um, to get a piece we need to collect for later so we can get into Generator, which, again, I will point out. Um, so the first level was Tutorial. This is the hub. That level that we just went into and are going back into now it's called Block Sheep, or Block Sheep Pastures. We just call it Block Sheep. So yeah, we do this again. And the reason I don't just quit out and then get the batteries is because uh, it won't actually turn into the batteries unless you leave and come back in, right? So um, you'll see, there, there are 350 batteries. The final artifact of that level, the, the one that was like two blocks stacked on top of each other, turns into 350 batteries. Um, because it takes 250 to get in and 100 to leave. Um, so it'll recompensate you for entering after you've already beaten the level, right? But you can actually quit out and reload, and those batteries will come back without you having to lose the batteries from leaving the level. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't actually turn into the batteries unless you leave the level entirely and come back. And we need to get, um, technically you can get, I think it's about 1100 batteries from this. However, you'd have to go out of your way significantly to get, um, like 150 or hundred batteries. It's a significant amount of batteries that you need to go out of your way for specifically. Um, so I just play on the safe side and I get 1400 and I think it is a little bit faster just because you don't need to go out of your way to get more batteries. Um, I've done several runs, and every single time I got 1,100 instead of 1,400, um, I was short on batteries, or my run ended up being longer. So I just need to do this two more times to get the amount of batteries we need. I know it's about, or almost 10 minutes into the video, but um, if you are on my channel for Souls content, um, I know I've done like a weird amount of speedrunning videos recently. I'm not transitioning to speedrunning content. I still prefer challenge running. Um, I'm still working 
on a couple challenge runs. Um, this was just something I did on the side and something that I've been wanting to do for a while anyway. This isn't, I'm going to try to upload this on a day that wouldn't conflict with anything else I'm doing. I'll probably upload this on like Tuesday or something. Thursday or Friday might be a better choice. I don't know. I kind of want to just put this out and see. <laughs> and again, this was to, oh wait, I do it again. Okay. You can leave there, but I didn't. All right. So you need 1400, not 1100. My bad. I got the numbers wrong in my head. Like I said, I just wanted to update this friend. Because, um, I don't know, just felt better. Plus, you know, obviously I did it faster. Um, I'll probably unlist the old video. But I'll put that as a link in the description if you want to see my last personal best that is commentated. And I probably won't make any more car quest speedrunning videos, at least for any percent, unless, like, a crazy trick is found. <laughs> there is one trick that could fall under that. But it's insanely difficult. I haven't even pulled it off once. Um, and I'm prob I'm personally probably not going to be using it in a run for a very long time. I haven't pulled it off. I don't remember if I said I pulled it off once or if I haven't pulled it off. But I have not I have not been able to do the trick. Um, I don't even know if it's possible because I don't think anybody else has either. But like I'm pretty sure it's possible. And unless I'm able to do that and make it consistent enough to put into a run. Because that would save about a minute, I think. Um, you know, I'm not going to be making any more car quest any percent videos i don't think so that <laughs> very much takes advantage oh also the the pillar bounce thing that i was talking about earlier um that's much easier on switch it works very differently on here you have to go straight on and then to the left rather than bounce off at an angle um but that that giant wall climb there is waddle skip skip because it skips a skip called waddle skip <laughs> so waddle skip is pretty infamous in the CarQuest speedrunning Discord, or in the CarQuest speedrunning community, rather, um, because it is surprisingly difficult. You have a really, really small run-up to um, actually get over a wall and to get that piece, but that way you can just, you know, drive up the whole wall and go in super easily. Um, these are the switches that the piece in Black Sheep Pastures unlocked, um, and this goes to Observatory, which gets us a piece that will unlock a pathway for us to get into Generator. Um, this game, casually, is a completely different experience. And personally, I do highly recommend experiencing it. It's a very fun game. I love it. Um, which is, you know, why I speedrun it. But it's definitely not a game that's for everyone. It's um, interesting. I, I really like it, like I said. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And it's probably one of my biggest artistic special interests. Um, at this point, it's definitely not just a hyperfixation, just because of how much I have played it and how long this has lasted <laughs> normally hyperfixations go away within a few months but at most but i've been playing this game for years i think since 2020 2019 and then oh yeah the, the jump from the hallway over into the attic uh with the buttons um that was post waddle skip skip which is almost impossible on switch but because of the different wall writing physics on pc um it's actually pretty easy um i think bishop has done it in a run once or twice um at least in a published run so if you want to see how that is on switch you can definitely go watch his run i believe he has a 36 something which is insane for switch <laughs> um switch has a lot of different tricks and a lot of um well it's it's a different run it, it's effectively a different game from a speed game standpoint um so those are the walls that disappeared with the piece that we got in observatory um let's just hit these two buttons quickly enough to open this um it is a timed button press so unfortunately you can't just press it and then take your time to get over here you do actually have to unlock the path so this is generator um, this is where my biggest mistake of the run is, which is crazy because it's so easy to not make a mistake here. Um, so we write up that wall and grab that piece. You can actually do that in that order um, on Switch, but you write up the wall from the platform rather than from the ground. And um, you can do basically the same thing on Switch. Uh, so yeah, that, that unlocks this path, which lets us get this piece, which then sequence breaks the level. <laughs> makes this yellow platform appear um but then instead of getting that green piece if you get that green piece you actually have to go around uh, on the yellow 
but because we didn't get the green piece, actually, you probably don't have to go around. Now that I think about it, um, on Switch, you would have to do this. But because of how the PC physics work, I'm pretty sure you actually can get that green piece, and then you don't have to jump over. You can just jump straight up onto the yellow platform and right up, which might be easier. I'll have to try that in the future, probably on a different category. Um, so this is where I messed up. <laughs> I wasn't able to correct my uh, trajectory well, and I actually had to ride up the wall to get back up on top, which was... I don't even understand how I made such a big mistake. <laughs> um... But luckily, the physics are broken enough that it's pretty easy to recover as much as I, as long as I took to do this. Um, sub 19, or sorry, sub 29, rather, is definitely possible. Um, if I hadn't messed that up, and then if I had done a little bit better on ice, um, easy sub 29. I don't know, maybe I'll try to go for that eventually. And then if that trick that I was talking about that I'll point out later is possible and I end up doing it, it'll probably be sub 28 probably maybe hopefully <laughs> i'm not actually sure so this is limbo um it's a maze and normally those color platforms um lord blockstar will show up and be like hey you should go this direction um but you know obviously i've memorized the maze mostly at this point i don't know why i went through this so slowly this was a very slow limbo probably the slowest limbo i've had in a while um anyway you get this this crown piece here and then you wait for it to fully disappear. If you do not wait for it to fully disappear, um, it won't count as you having collected it. Um, so if you quit out and then load back in, you won't actually have the piece. So you have to do all of Limbo again. But because um, I waited for it to disappear, it counts as having the piece, which means the exit portal is loaded, which means we can leave super easily. And then this is Bristle. This is the closest thing the game has to a boss fight. Um, the easiest way to do it is by doing this. Um, on PC, it is insanely difficult if you fail to do it here. So if I had missed that, I would have reset and then tried that again. Um, it is kind of difficult, but doing it normally is way harder. <laughs> um, so this is a stained glass piece. We got one earlier, but we need 10 of them to beat the game because um, once we collect all 10, um, the museum will be restored and the exit portals to like get to the credits um, will be there. <laughs> They're part of the museum, is the point. And I'll show that off later. Obviously, we have to go through there to beat the game. Um, so now, I'm going to go collect the other eight stained glass pieces. The first one that I collect is in the ocean, because on the way to ocean, there is a an artifact that unlocks the, um, the arena, sorry, <laughs> the bridge to get to the arena, or at least to the Colosseum. I don't remember the names. <laughs> the Colosseum, I think, is the overworld area that leads to the level called Arena. Um, the level in the file is just called, like, Glass Box or something. I don't know. So we get this piece so that that piece unlocks so we can collect that piece, which will open a bridge that lets us get to the ocean portal. I don't know why <laughs> I did that like that. That was unnecessarily dangerous. So we collect that piece, and then that bridge right there spawns in. Um, normally, if you have hints on, it'll show like animations of all the terrain falling into place after you collect the artifacts. Um, normally, what you're supposed to do is actually land on that block whale, um, but you don't need to. If you boost at that point specifically, you'll be able to make it over to the other ramp without using the block whale. Um, and I do that out of safety, just in case the block whale decides to move or whatever. Um, but generally, it's pretty easy to actually get onto the block whale and make it no problem um, and it just happens to line up with the cycle that we collect the pieces on so this stained glass piece only shows up after bristle so unless you've fought bristle first this stained glass piece will not show up um, which is really weird i don't understand why the game would expect you to come back here that's probably the hardest stained glass piece to find in my opinion because like the one in ice uh, that we have to go to in a minute it's there. You just can't collect it before Bristle. <laughs> um, after It's like in an ice cube, and after Bristle, the ice cube will disappear, right? So that's like, I think that's a really cool way of cluing you in. Um, maybe an NPC tells you to visit the beach. There's like a tour guide NPC that shows up after Bristle that'll be like, hey, we visited the beach, which I guess is a hint, but I don't know. It doesn't 
feel because he does also tell you to go to their places um the other the only other one like that is observatory and i don't know the point of that portal is that it changes um through the game so like that when you first go through the portal that takes you to observatory if you don't collect the pac-man shaped piece right um the one that we had to do waddle skip skip for also that drop is deceptively difficult it's not that hard but it's relatively precise and i messed it up a lot um anyway the, it's called the excursion portal right so the first time you go through it you get taken to an island um and then you collect the pac-man piece which makes it go to the observatory so it makes sense you would go back there to see if it leads you to a different place and there's a stained glass piece in there even though it's still the observatory um so one of the pieces at the beginning of the run that like three dots one opened up that which is hopscotch we call that piece um the one on the platform with the 50 battery is chess because there are two characters playing chess there um, and the kid calls those like buttons on the ground hopscotch. So that one's that that is why that one is called hopscotch. Um, so the trick that I was talking about that I've never done is over here outside uh, on the left. You can actually get up on this like wall here and then ride the wall to try to get behind that barrier. It is insane <laughs> if it's even possible. Um, but that would save a lot of time because we wouldn't have to come in here. We wouldn't have to collect any of these pieces. Um, there are a couple pieces later on that we need to collect um, that we wouldn't need to. We wouldn't need to come all the way back here later. Um, so it would save quite a bit of time and it would be very, very nice. Anyway, so now there are four more stained glass pieces, or five more. Well, okay. Um, there's one in observatory, there's one in ice, and then there are two after a difficult jump. Um, so I go over here, I do the difficult jump first because if I mess it up, um, ice and observatory are right here or it's not observatory it's pirate party because the level did technically change but it's still in the observatory <laughs> uh, it's called pirate party because the pirate gang that caused Plactaria to be destroyed um is there <laughs> you have to play the game for yourself <laughs> anyway this is the difficult jump you have to do it fairly quickly because there's one of the time switches that we had to do to get into generator here's the second one and then the first stained glass piece after this difficult jump. Um, I would say this is probably the second hardest part of the run. I used to think it was the hardest um, because it is extremely difficult. But just because of how many times I've done it, it's gotten easier over time. Um, the hardest for me now is probably ice. Um, and it's, it's kind of dangerous. It doesn't lose a ton of time, but it loses enough time to be like run ending if you're on a good pace. So... Once we get there, I'll explain that. So now I'm going to go back and um, try to do the wall ride. If I mess up the wall ride, I'm going to go to Pirate Party. If I don't mess up the wall ride, then I'm going to go to Ice. Um, but this one's not under time pressure or anything because I don't didn't need to hit the switch because I already, I already ugh, Jesus, I already got that one. <laughs> so don't need to worry too much. But again, Ice is, in my opinion, significantly more difficult, which... Um, still makes this little part of the run intimidating because it's like all right the last hard part if i do this well this will be a good pace run if i don't then you know it won't be a good pace run though obviously that's assuming you don't mess up earlier i was kind of disappointed that i messed that up um it probably would have been better to just go down to pirate party but instead i did this kind of recovered but that last you know probably five seconds which isn't huge but it's significant still in my opinion Especially at the level that I'm running this game. Yeah, so this is ice. Those little guys down there are pixel penguins. And every time I see one, I think, oh, it's Bishop. Because Bishop, the the runner who has world record on Switch, um, used this as used one of the penguins as his profile picture for a long time. <coughs> um, so this skip is called House Piece Skip. On Switch, it's really difficult. You have to line up the ramp at a specific point and then hit that wall on the right or that like sloped part of the wall on the right and then bounce up onto here and it's insanely precise for i mean there are other tricks that are more precise on switch um but that one is still very precise <coughs> oh jeez. and then this one is the hardest part of the run in my opinion you have to right up this wall and then get up onto there but you'll see why it's difficult in just a second But yeah, house piece skip on PC is very easy. I need to drink some water real quick. <clears throat> yeah, 
you have to have enough speed that you can get up here and land up on this platform. But you need to have little enough speed that you won't go flying off the edge, right? So it is it is pretty precise. And then we just need to get Pirate Party and then Arena. Or Coliseum, rather. The Coliseum stained glass piece. Um, so this is one of the things I messed up in my first sub-30. Um, so now I play it extremely safe by coming all the way over here. This is very unnecessary. You can just kind of drive to the right at the right angle. Um, but messing it up loses quite a bit of time, and that's one of the things that I messed up. And so now I just do it super safe. Eventually, I'll probably do it the fast way again, but, you know... <laughs> This is the last portal we'll be going through in the entire run, aside from the exit portal, obviously, but that's the last place we need batteries. Um, and as you can see, if I hadn't gotten that last 350, then I would have had to go out of my way. This is why it's called Fire Party. <laughs> I would have had to go out of my way to get a few extra batteries throughout the run. But I don't have sound because I was recording the wrong sound channel, um, so I, the game sound wasn't actually recorded. But... I'll put the music for Pirate Party in post here, just because I feel like you deserve it after such a long run. Or, well, I mean, shortest run in the world, but you know what I mean. <coughs> Jesus Christ. I'm fine. <laughs> I should probably be drinking more water, but that's a lot of effort. So now to get the final stained glass piece, this is something that we would be able to skip if that skip that I haven't been able to see yet were possible and consistent to use in, in runs. We have to go over to this first archway and then jump behind the start to collect the piece that opens the pathway that we would skip to with the skip that I can't do. And then there are two more pieces, or rather there's one more piece, two more two more pieces that we need to get here. There's that one, which causes these buttons up here to appear, which then, in turn, lets us get a piece, lets us get up to the museum up there and on the left of the screen, um, which is where the two exit portals are. So we get those, collect this piece, um, and that makes a ramp spawn, which will go up in just a moment after we get the last stained glass piece. And then we come back in here. Again, this part could be completely cut off if that skip were feasible. <laughs> and then I played this a little bit safe. It's entirely possible to boost path past both of these. Um, but it's really risky. Um, and I didn't feel like doing it after such a decent run. Because <laughs> I kind of figured this would be a really good time. And then this portal teleports you up on top of the Colosseum. And then we have to drop down to the glass piece. Um, you can drop off to the right here and collect the piece, but it's extremely precise, and I'm not actually sure how to do it. I, that is something I need to practice, but it, it would only save a few seconds, and it is very risky. Because if you fall, you have to do all that again, you know? So there's the final stained glass piece. Um, it might be faster to fall here rather than waiting and going out to the main menu. I'm not actually sure. Yeah. I need to drink more water. But I my water bottle is empty. <laughs> so yeah, second ever sub-30. Um, actually, I did have another sub-30 run at some point. Um, but it was worse than my previous world record. So obviously I didn't post it. Third ever sub-30, but second record under sub 30 or under 30 minutes um i'm pretty proud of this run i'll probably keep running car quest but i probably won't make a commentated video or anything i'll probably just post it on speedrun.com or whatever um again i highly recommend playing this game if you're interested in it casually at all um 
It's I I love it. <laughs> um, oh, I just realized that this the credits actually have my dead name. <laughs> I need to message Ezon about that. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all for watching. Um, I again I know this is out of the norm for my channel, um, but uh, it probably won't happen too often. At least not again anytime soon. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I love you all. And I especially want to thank Rattini, LA is my home, Wins July, Nick Sensei, Krista, White Flame, Port Wine, Tartuga Lagosta, Cusco the Emperor, V, Manorock, and Ryan Rickard for supporting the channel. I don't know how to end this. <laughs>